Okay. So I was hoping you could walk me through the first, why you first decided to get on Twitter and how that works for you in your daily job. Um, I decided to get on Twitter about three years ago. Um, people were starting to refer to it um, in their conversations in blog posts that I was. So I read blogs. I've been, I've been blogging for six or seven years. So it started to be their references to this. So I started to use it, and I saw it as a way for us to, first of all, put out links to our material so people could read our tweets and then come to our blog posts. So it's a way to get alert people uh, who are online about our work. The other thing is, because our comment section of our blog post hasn't been, it's been not very user-friendly, so we needed a way to talk to people online in a, in a, where everyone's meeting. So Twitter really works for that as well. And what I'm finding is that the conversation that goes on uh, online is more and more happening on Twitter rather, rather than any blog post. And in the future, there may be very few comments online uh, related to stories or in blog posts. And most of the discussion will happen on Twitter because that's where everyone congregates um, to join in a more general discussion. Why is that discussion so important for you? Well, as a columnist, um, I spend a lot of time debating and arguing with people. So being on Twitter, I kind of um, can sharpen my arguments. I can see what people are saying. Um, I can crowdsource ideas. So I can put out, I'm going to be writing about snow removal today. What do you think of the city snow removal? And I can hear 15 different opinions. So I'm just one person and I have an opinion, but it's good to hear from all of these different people. Uh, about what they have to say about it, and they think of things that I might not have thought of, and 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 if I can, I can also put out ideas that are um, maybe provocative and see what the response is. I can see if there's interest in a column. So this is a way for me to get all kinds of information about the work that I'm doing uh, in a way that I never had before, unless I was going to go talk to people on the street. So it's it's actually invaluable to my work especially in terms of formulating arguments because you learn exactly what the other side is thinking and what their concerns are and how you can address those concerns. One thing that I've noticed in our past conversations is that it seems like for you Twitter was really a learned thing. You, um, you, you made mistakes and learned from those mistakes and worked through them. Can you talk about that a bit? Well, I think if, you're, if you've been writing for a newspaper for a long time, you're used to having a one-way conversation, generally speaking, with your readers. You're used to writing something and not having the, the uh, readers respond. <laughs> That's my baby in the background. <laughs> you're used to, and so when people start responding, and, they're, and a lot of them are quite rude and aggressive in their responses because there's a lot of hostility built up over the years through this one one way conversation and there's actually frankly a lot of people who want our jobs who are jealous of the work we do and want to attack us just be just for that reason so there's axes to grind so when you go on twitter uh, initially and you're a mainstream uh, reporter or columnist you're going to get a lot of of people coming at you and coming at you hard and it takes you a while to figure that out and to react in the proper way. And the proper way, generally speaking, is people who are you know, profane and obnoxious, you just block them. But most people, you, you, that's not the first thing you gotta do. You gotta try to engage people um, and respond very coldly and calmly to the argument. It's, it's uh, kind of a, a you, get a, you, you feel yourself heating up when you're reading these things, but that's not the way to respond. You have to take your time. Um, see what the kernel of the argument is and figure out a way to respond to it as calmly as possible and as coolly as possible. And once you start doing that on Twitter, it starts to get a lot easier. You just, you just shrug off personal attacks and uh, people who are trying to, to get you angry. And y if they're bad enough, you block them. And other than that, you just respond in a calm way and move on. Yeah. Is there any specific advice you'd have for students just getting onto Twitter and hoping to become reporters? Well, if you're if you want to be, you have to be careful what you're going to say on Twitter. If you want to make a public life, you have to be very careful what you say on Twitter. Um, I, you can't be just, you know. When I think if I had gotten on Twitter in my twenties, it would have been very bad. I would have been in lots of fights. But maybe I would have learned quicker too. Maybe I would have learned these lessons uh, more rapidly. So I just think you have to be careful um, and. Don't come across as a know-it-all if you're a young reporter, especially. 
As a reporter, you're someone who gathers information, doesn't express their opinions a lot. So you have to be cognizant of that and not turn off a whole side of debate with your opinion. If you're going to be a reporter, opinion work isn't necessarily the right thing to do. At least if you want to work for a mainstream organization. If you want to be a new style blogger reporter, that's a different beast and we're just creating what that's going to be. And I think this new style of reporter is going to be able to express their opinions and um, have more leeway in expression than, than we've seen in the past. But we're not quite there yet. We don't, there's, this, this animal doesn't exist yet in a way that uh, is a real job for people. Um, there's lots of people who have blogs and they're not making any money from it. But if you want to become a reporter, I think you want to make a living. So you have to adhere to professional standards. Thanks.